Okay, this sermon is entitled, False Calvinistic Accusations. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 130 reads, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Now, when it comes to these stupid Calvinists, these unsaved devils, these people have to use several wicked and disingenuous tactics to prove that their stupid system is quote-unquote biblical, and these people like to employ false accusations against people that do not agree with this stupid, demonic, wicked soteriology. And I believe they're doing this because their false accusations have to be true, otherwise their system crumbles and falls asunder. The first accusation they make is they claim that if you're not a Calvinist, you have self-generated faith. They teach that faith is a gift, and because we deny this, then we are just generating or manufacturing our own faith. But see, this is a bunch of garbage, because when it comes to faith, there are several things that have to predate or precede faith. Number one, a person has to hear the gospel. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I believe that the Holy Spirit draws people unto God, but I don't believe that Faith is a gift in the sense that the Calvinist teaches because that would be forced or coerced faith, and that's akin to rape. Now, in Hebrews chapter 7, it reads in verse 25, it says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Notice it says that these people came unto God by him. They didn't come on their own accord. So faith is something that God plays a role in, but he doesn't force it on people like these unsaved Calvinists teach. The second false accusation made by the Calvinist is that we are boasting about coming to God. Now this is a load of stupidity as well. When a person gets saved, they're not boasting about themselves coming to Christ or believing on Christ. They're boasting about what he did alone. And typically, when somebody else doesn't get saved, the person who is saved feels sorry for that person, wonders why they would reject the gospel and the free gift of eternal life. They're not going around bragging that I got saved and you didn't, nanana boo boo. It's a bunch of garbage. But see, like I said, the Calvinist has to pretend that we are boasting about coming to God so that they can continue teaching that God forces people to come to him like a bunch of helpless slaves. Number three, the Calvinist will call you an antinomian. And that's an accusation as well because they're accusing you of just being an out-and-out lawbreaker. Now, I guess anyone could call somebody an antinomian, but see, in my own experience, the only people that have ever called myself an antinomian and other free grace preachers have been Calvinists. And the real reason they're calling a person an antinomian is because we are saved by grace, they're attempting to be saved by the law, and they're not saved. But nevertheless, they charge you with antinomianism because these people hate free grace theology. Number four, they call you an Arminian. Now, this implies that there's only two options when it comes to Christianity. There's Arminianism, and then there's Calvinism. When in reality, there's a third position, it's called free grace. You don't have to be a stupid, unsaved Arminian or a stupid, unsaved Calvinist because both systems lead straight to hell. The only difference between Arminianism and Calvinism is one group loses their salvation, the other group just proves they never had it to begin with. It's all the same thing because it's predicated on a person's lifestyle. Number five, they call you a universalist. Now, the only reason they're doing this is because the Calvinist has removed free will. If God wants everyone to be saved, then universalism is true. If God only wants the elect to be saved, then Calvinism is true if you take out free will. If you include free will, then neither Calvinism or Universalism are true, and the number of people who get saved is not set in stone. Number six, the Calvinists will accuse you of being unlearned. They'll say things like, well, you don't know the deeper things of God, or you just don't understand this because you don't have a degree in theology or whatever. But see, when it comes to the Bible, there's a simplicity in Christ, so therefore it doesn't matter how educated a person is. Anyone can understand the simple gospel, and 
Once a person is saved, the Holy Spirit will lead them into all truth. Therefore, your education level is immaterial. And then finally, the Calvinist will say that you don't understand the Greek. Here's my response to that. You don't understand plain English. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, the Calvinist will distort that and pervert that and twist it out of context and falsely exegete that verse, but yet they don't even believe it. They don't understand what world means. They don't understand what whosoever means. And frankly, they don't understand what believing means because Calvinists reject the concept of easy believism or faith alone in Christ alone. They claim that true faith is never alone. So, once again, the Calvinists make these false accusations because they need them to be true in order for their stupid, wicked, satanic system of theology to stand. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.